So Hi. Lisa actually has uh, a bachelor's, master's, and PhD in engineering, all from MIT. I spend a lot of time in school. So. <laughs> and when you find something you like, you stick with it, huh? That's right. Yeah. OK, so um, five years ago, you became the CEO of AMD. And the, the company was in a very different spot back then, uh, declining share price and kind of struggling to, to find its place in a market that's really dominated by very few, very large players. Um, and today, you're one of the best performing stocks in the S&P 500. So give us a quick, um, Thank you. quick, quick glimpse into the keys of the turnaround at AMD. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor to be here. And you know, AMD is a company that's been around for 50 years. But we've never quite you know, hit our stride. And um, you know, five years ago, this was an opportunity for me. It was actually my dream job to run a semiconductor company. And uh, many people would say, well, why would you want to do that? <laughs> it's what every little girl wants. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, you know, it's the idea that you can, you, you can make something. You can build products. You can put it on a shelf. And somebody will buy it and will know that it's yours. And uh, the key for us um, was really, you know, it's, a, it's an industry where you have to make bets over the long term. So um, the bets sometimes take three years to pay off, sometimes take five years to pay mm -hmm. off. And uh, Wall Street is um, uh, very fickle and hard to, uh, hard to keep the attention span. But I think we, we really focused. We mm -hmm. decided, hey, we were going to focus on great products. And um, it was going to take us three years to get the next products out. And we had to be very, very clear on what we were not going to do, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, you know, sort of change our strategy. And, and that focus, which you, you talk about, um, you know, you're focusing on certain products means you're not focusing on others. And that's not just a product decision. It's a personnel decision that has impact. How did you get everybody in line with that renewed focus? Um, extreme communication. Mm -hmm. Extreme communication in terms of um, I think uh, you know. This morning it was discussed. Like you, you say something like 75 times, and then you have to say it like another 75. Um, but it was very much around. Uh, we are about our products. We are about our customers, and we are about simplifying everything that we do, mm -hmm. so that um, you know, so that everyone in the company is clear on what our strategy is. And for those of us who are not in the semiconductor industry, just give a sense of what those areas are that you chose to focus on. So um, we are focused on um, you know, products that are really for high performance computing. So the idea that uh, we're all about how we get more efficient, um, data centers are the you know, a large uh, piece of um, things that are going to grow in the future. And our focus is on building really powerful uh, computers. Mm -hmm. OK, you have new That means customers. we don't do small things. Right. So like we're not like in what? your phone, but we might be in your PC, and uh, we might be in your data center that is you know, powering uh, your cloud. And because of that, you have a, a, a host of new customers that didn't exist for AMD before you took over. So talk a little bit about that. I mean, Amazon's AWS, Oracle, Twitter. What do you do for them? Yeah, you know, what um, was really important to me um, when I took over as CEO was um, how did we have, you know, sort of large brands associated with what we do? Because, um, you know, my feeling was uh, if, if we can get the most marquee customers uh, using AMD products, then that was, you know, validation. So, you know, for example, we're powering um, some of Google's data centers um, today. So if you're running... Um, you know, some applications on Google you may be running on AMD. And, uh, you know, we're working with Twitter. Um, I'm a big Twitter fan. I don't know how many of you are, but that's, uh, that's one of the things that I uh, It's that a double-edged sword. <laughs> well, <laughs> once in a while, yes, yes. Um, you know, we're in Microsoft's new uh, Surface laptop. And, uh -huh. and those are, you know, marquee brands where um, relationships were really built over, um, you know, many years to, to get there. Mm -hmm. And I, I think everybody in this room um, has to make bets towards the future. But in your business, it's way towards the future. And so how do you, what's the process of making those bets? Who do you have around you that's helping you to make those decisions that this is the, the next big market for our products? You know, what's really um, important in, um, in our world is uh, really getting close to the, the people um, who are doing the engineering. Mm -hmm. So I'm an engineer at heart, and I actually spend um, quite a bit of time with our uh, chief engineers and architects to understand where they think the future is going. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, it's all about making bets. 
Um, sometimes you make the wrong bets, and um, hopefully most of the time you make the right bets, but uh, the important thing is sticking to those bets mm -hmm. uh, because the, uh, the life cycle of, um, of semiconductors are so long. Do you miss being an engineer? Do I miss being an engineer? Sometimes. Sometimes I miss being an engineer. But I have the uh, luxury of being able to go into uh, the labs and see what we're doing at any, at any given time. So that, right. that's fun. You, you have a lot of them around you. Yes. And, and how, how has the background of being an engineer, how has it um, helped and maybe hindered in some ways your transition into being a, a CEO? Well, I, I think uh, for tech companies, having you know, some intuition about what you were trying to do is helpful. And so certainly for me, it's been helpful. I've, I've had to learn about the business on the job, and so I've made you know, sort of my share of, uh, of, of mistakes doing that. Um, but fundamentally, understanding, um, you know, I, 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 I thought what the, the major said was interesting, like flying is a great equalizer. Like I think engineering is a great equalizer, right? Because either the product works or it doesn't work. Um, there's no in-between. Mm -hmm. that's, that's sort of how I look at it. Okay, I'm going to uh, switch to a slightly tougher topic for you, for all of us, I think, today, which is China and the trade war. So. Um, you had started back in 2016, you had started a joint venture in China um, to uh, license your technology there. And that was put, that organization, that joint venture was um, blacklisted by our government uh, just this summer. I think we're all very, you know, we think about Huawei and, and maybe a few other companies, but there are many companies that have been impacted by this. So, so what is this... Um, turn of events mean for that joint venture and for the future of your business overall in China? You know, when you look at um, you know, U.S.-China relations, it is a very, very complex topic. And we do you know, maybe 30% of our business in China, so it's a large market for us. And um, you know, the way we think about it is, look, the world is different today than it was four or five years ago. I think the, um, you know, the thoughts around how do you balance both access to the market, which is one of the largest markets in the world, but also uh, the fact that um, you know, there are national security concerns as it relates to high tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, for our case, we're making some of the most powerful processors in the world, and um, we want to make sure they're used uh, for good things. And so you know, it's an adjustment, but it's an adjustment that we are you know, very prepared to make. And you know, the most important thing is uh, you know, to make sure that we're focused on you know, our strengths, which are you know, around you know, high-performance computing. So if you, if you take a step back, though, I mean, do you think that we should be, at this moment, exporting uh, computing technology, computing power to China to begin with? Well, I think there are um, lots of different things that, uh, you know, we, we do trade with China on, and there are certain aspects of our technology that are really, really special. Mm -hmm. And we should protect those, you know, really, really special things as much as possible, and then realize that, um, for leadership in the U.S. markets, we still need access to the largest markets in the world. Uh -huh. um, where do you, so two questions, I guess. Um, where do you see or hope things are going, <laughs> if, you, if you look into your crystal ball? Um, and then the other question, you can answer whichever one you want first, but I think, it, you know, obviously one of the hardest things with the current climate and, and the trade war um, is the uncertainty and the unpredictability um, of these twists and turns. And so how do you lead through that, especially at a company that it, it has very direct, large impact? Well, I think what's really exciting to me is there's just so much you can do with technology. And um, there's so many applications that we can address. You know, whether, you know, we talk about you know, sort of very geeky stuff. But if you think about what we can do to uh, you know, transform you know, medicine and education and you know, um, you know, address climate change and all of these things. You really need powerful computers, mm -hmm. and that's what we build. And so that's that's the really exciting thing. And then your your second question about just, um, you know, how do we navigate these waters? I think we're all in the same place, right? We're all in the same place. Like every day we wake up, and there could be something different that you're addressing, um, and that's the life of a CEO or a senior executive. And uh, you know, I think we're I think we get used to that. I, I, one of the things that I'm uh, most uh, uh, you know focused on is ensuring that we are very agile as a company. Like you know, you know, we have 10,000 people. It's not a small company, but it's not a huge company. And the idea is, how can we make you know um, 10,000 people be able to turn on a dime? 
as, um, as market conditions change and as, um, you know, as, as customer needs change. Okay, and I, I'm gonna turn to you guys for questions, but one more question on the China side. Um, just to, to kind of clarify and give more context, I mean, we're not talking about just chips that are going into uh, you know, consumer PCs or whatnot. Um, the concern has been around chips that are going, high, high, high performance chips that are going into supercomputers, right? And some of those supercomputers are used by the Chinese government for various means. So just give a sense of like what these supercomputers can do for better or worse. Well, I think the, um, the, the, the real um, opportunity is supercomputers will allow you to, you know, really simulate things before they happen. And um, that allows, us to predict, you know, much better, you know, and you know, some areas it's business problems, other areas it's, you know, how do you pre predict the weather, and you know, some areas are are weapons related. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from our standpoint, you know, again, it's um, it's really um, exciting to be at the forefront of technology. Uh, one of the areas that we're most excited about is, um, you know, AMD was just awarded the. Uh, uh, the next generation highest performance super supercomputer for the United States. So uh, Oak Ridge National Labs will be building a, um, not that you need to know this, but a one and a half exaflop computer uh, that does lots and lots of things and it'll be using um, you know, our uh, processors. And so we're very proud of that. And uh, you know, we just need to make sure that we keep pushing the envelope. And I know we get very excited about the 50 most powerful women, but there's actually a list of 50, the 50, like the top 50 supercomputers in the world. That's so right. that's very exciting in your world, I know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we all get okay. excited about different yeah. things, so. All right, all right. Um, questions from you guys. Please raise your hand if you would like to ask Lisa a question. Um, over here, can we get a microphone? And if you could introduce yourself real fast. Hello, Lisa. Thank you for being here. My name is Leah Sweet from PayPal, so in a tech industry. I'm curious how you balance innovation with the long lead times that you have for your new technology. As your competition moves forward, as the dynamics of the industry change, you have to be able to change, as you said, on a dime, a large organization to focus on new and innovative products, but at the same time, you have extensive lead times in development, and so you have to have a significant amount of time reserved for that. How do you handle that balance? Yeah, you know, it's a very interesting balance. What, uh, what we do is, you know, we really take sort of two aspects of it. One is, there is just foundation, right? There's, you know, foundational intellectual property that you know you have to invest in, and you know you have to be the best at, and, and that hardly ever changes. And then you have um, what is more customer driven. And um, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, that I find is you learn so much from every conversation about you know, what's going on in the market and what customers need. And so we're able to adjust um, late in the cycle sort of what we do with individual customers. But that foundational um, IP and that, that innovation um, has, to, has to really you know, stand there. Um, I'm going to give one last very, very quick question. I've always wondered how you guys name your chip lines. You've got like Matisse and Picasso and Rome and Naples. So how does that work? Okay, so here's what I would say. The large brands I actually weigh in on, okay? Uh -huh. It's like one of the most fun things, like, you know, the marketing guys will come in with like 50 names and I'll say, you know, like one of our big product lines is a name uh, called Ryzen, uh -huh. and uh, it, it plays off of Zen, which is a very you know sort of balanced um, a balanced system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when when I first heard about that, I said, Oh my God, I'm going to call it Raisin by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, um, but the other stuff, it, we let engineers do it. You know, this is uh, you know we are a company of engineers, and the engineers name the ind individual products. The branding experts. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me.